The Wall Street Journal has informed that the warm public relationship between US President-elect Donald Trump and Russian leader Vladimir Putin hides deep tensions. Recently, reports emerged suggesting that Donald Trump held a phone call with Putin the day after his victory in the elections. During the conversation, Trump advised Putin to avoid escalating the war in Ukraine. The WSJ has recalled that relations between Washington and Moscow worsened during Trump's first term. Putin and Trump failed to reach agreements on core issues such as arms control, security cooperation, and continued U.S. support for Ukraine, which Russian forces invaded in 2014. Russia sought agreements on tactical and intercontinental nuclear weapons and a deal that would somehow satisfy Moscow's demands for Ukraine to remain neutral and not join NATO. Kurt Volker, former U.S. representative to NATO under Trump's administration, believes that Trump's warm words towards Putin mask a more transactional negotiation tactic. So if you look at his first term, he had a very warm commentary toward Putin. At that same time, he lifted an arms embargo on Ukraine and kicked the Russians out of San Francisco and called it a spying operation. He threw out about 80 intelligence officers from New York and Washington said Volker. According to the US diplomat, Trump does not demonize the person he's negotiating with as he wants to make a deal. Now, Trump and Putin have returned to the warm public rhetoric, but the camaraderie belies deeper tensions. Putin is not ready for any substantive talk around any possible peace plan because he is not ready to make any concessions. Full stop. He believes that he has enough financial and emotional resources to continue, said Andrei Kolesnikov, a veteran Russian watcher. While Trump has promised to end the war in Ukraine even before taking office, Putin has already laid out his terms for coming to the negotiating table. Putin wants significant territorial concessions from Ukraine and assurances that Kyiv will not join NATO. Additionally, he seeks a rollback of extensive U.S. sanctions. A former U.S. diplomat to Russia stated that the Russian president believes he is doing quite well on the battlefield and even increased diplomatic contact with Trump is unlikely to soften his behavior. The Israeli military on Thursday said that its troops continued limited, localized, and targeted operational activity in southern Lebanon. It released video said to show troops in action in southern Lebanon and footage showing the destruction of what it described as militant infrastructure. The Israel-Hamas war began after Palestinian militants stormed into Israel on October 7, 2023, killing some 1,200 people, mostly civilians, and abducting 250 others. Lebanon's Hezbollah group began firing into Israel on October 8, 2023, in solidarity with Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Since then, more than 3,200 people have been killed in Lebanon and more than 14,200 wounded, the country's health ministry reported. In Israel, 76 people have been killed, including 31 soldiers. The Israeli military on Wednesday struck several sites in Beirut's southern suburbs, an area known as Dahia, after issuing evacuation warnings. It said the strikes were targeting Hezbollah facilities and interests. There were no immediate reports of casualties. Also on Wednesday, an Israeli airstrike on an apartment building in the town of Aramoun, just south of Beirut, killed at least six people and wounded 15 others Wednesday, Lebanon's health ministry said in a statement. The state-run national news agency reported that there were children missing after the strike and, it is not known whether they are under the rubble or were transferred to a hospital in the area. There was no warning issued before the strike, 
and it was not clear what the target was. There was no immediate statement from the Israeli military. Israeli forces and the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah have been clashing since October 8, 2023, when Hezbollah began launching rockets across the border in support of its ally, Hamas, in Gaza. The conflict escalated beginning in mid-September. Israel has launched a widespread aerial bombardment of Lebanon and a ground invasion that it said is intended to push Hezbollah back from the border.